Good evening and a very warm welcome to you. Thank you so much for joining us here on Economic Forum, where we discuss all things relating to the economy. My name is Farai Gwaze. And today, we'll be taking a very close look at the significant contribution of agriculture towards Zimbabwe's economic development. Many programs have been put in place to ensure that we meet Vision 2030, that we become a middle-upper income economy by that particular stage. However, the state of preparedness would be able to guide us further in knowing as to whether we will actually realize those targets. Feel free to also engage with us during the course of the program on our WhatsApp number. You can also follow us on our social media platforms. That's Economic Forum as Zimbabwe. I'll be joined in studio by Federation of Young Farmers Club of Zimbabwe spokesperson, uh, Mr. Yus Banda, and he'll be sharing with us a bit more uh, detail, rather, in light with the current projection of Zimbabwe's economy in relation to agriculture. Mr. Sibanda, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, good to be here. Good evening, Farai. Good evening, Zimbabwe. Uh, briefly, tell us a bit about uh, your organization and uh, its role in agriculture. All right. The Federation of Young Farmers Clubs Zimbabwe is a youth-focused uh, organization uh, that has a bias on agriculture. Uh, it comprises um, young people between the ages of 18 to 40 uh, who are in the agricultural space. And um, from production, um, processing, uh, marketing, right up to export-led uh, growth within any anybody who's in the age group who's in the agri-sector in one way, shape or form, mm -hmm. we cater to. We've been in existence for about uh, eight years. We've got on uh, annual programs that we host, such as our you know Young Farmers Awards, mm -hmm. um, and we are, um, uh, work closely with, uh, with the Ministry of Agriculture. We're registered with them as, um, as an association that implements their policies and as a catalyst for certain programs that they want to see come to fruition within the space. Right. Yeah. Right. Now, um, let's look at um, the current state of uh, preparedness when it comes to agriculture. Yeah. Um, at the State of the Nation, well, as, as during um, the budget speech that was given uh, last year yes. uh, by Honorable Minister Tulin Mube, um, he highlighted that there was um, a significant contribution that was meant to stabilize the economy mm -hmm. through the role of agriculture. Where are we when it comes to our level of preparedness okay. and meeting some of those targets. Preparedness is a very tricky concept because um, as you are aware uh, agriculture is season to season but we're coming in a context where we are developing and 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 um, fine-tuning our agriculture industry and agriculture space um, following close to two decades of economic uh, turmoil so to speak. Sure. So we have to acknowledge that context and uh, so that we understand the aspect of preparedness that you that you're trying to zone in sure. on in in terms of the immediate preparedness i'm happy to say that because of the good rainy season i was scheduled to have a bumper harvest mm -hmm. and um we we are now uh prepared to harvest a good harvest all, all things being equal right but um, we have to be cognizant of the fact that the next season is upon us very soon. So we have to talk about preparedness in the context of our land preps, our um, irrigation uh, um, uh, preparedness. Our, uh, you know. And actually, where do we stand when it comes to irrigation preparedness? Because it did also yeah. come up as an issue um, since we were leveraging off the actual rainy season. Yeah. Some would say that we've had too much rain, others would yeah. argue otherwise. But correlate those two what happens usually is um we've got your 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 your, your rain fed crop and you've got your your it's, it's we call it dry crop which is basically fed by agriculture right. now we're actually going into winter crop which is wheat um predominantly and um what the government has done which which we think is is key to mention is that they have launched uh, several programs that are aimed at capacitating our reservoirs so our dams and the projects are big, ranging from as big as Tokwem Kose to as small as um, you know communal projects in Chiredzi area and um, the recent one that was launched in Chipinge. Mm -hmm. Those programs are key because your rain only comes from around November, December. Okay. So they, the, 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 going back to the issue of preparedness, I think the, 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 the officials within the ministry in terms of policy and in terms of boots on the ground um, uh, have... have I think leapfrogged relative in terms of time to, to, to a stage where we can see positive uh, levels of preparedness. Mm 
um, touch wood, but we think that right. we we had a very good uh, output in terms of our winter wheat last year. We might have a slightly better one mm. this year. I'm glad that you do bring up our last year's figures because a, yeah. a concern that does come up uh, predominantly at the moment, in as much as we be, we may be prepared, you also did highlight that with this particular uh, sector, um, you don't know until you actually get uh, yes. uh, to the end of the season. Yes. So in essence... Um, I guess a guesstimation yeah. uh, would be appropriate to at least establish what we can look at in terms of our output uh, at the end of this particular season. Okay, so your major your major indicators are tobacco and uh, and maize, right? Um, with regards to maize, uh, we are said to have um, a slight surplus. Our normal requirement is about two million or so uh, tons mm. to feed the nation. So we're looking at slightly more than the 2 million, maybe 2.3 to 2.5 million tons, which hasn't been the case for the past 5 to 10 years. Mm -hmm. We've been a net importer of grain. But we said to, to if, if, we, if our harvests go well and there's not too much rain mm -hmm. at the end of the season, right. um, we, should, we should be okay. Mm -hmm. uh, we have to, as you correctly said, we have to guard against um, over-optimism and ensure right. that our combined harvesters are in place mm -hmm. and we've got fuel to harvest on time, right. ETC and mm -hmm. storage in terms of our you know, storage facilities, ETC right. has to be also on point. Certain areas, especially uh, within, uh, well, throughout the country rather, have experienced um, at, up to 250 milli millimeters, right? Other, yeah. uh, um, of uh, rainfall within just a period of 24 hours. Yes. Um, surely that contributes negatively towards moisture content uh, within yeah. the, 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 the um, bead maize or even the uh, tobacco. Yes, um, certainly. It's a very hard season each time there's a, there's a lot of rain. So it comes down to management. Um, I think um, it's safe to say also as a, as far, personally as a farmer that you don't want to lose your crop to 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 you know um, things like moisture etc so you there's strategies in place that we put in to ensure that we don't face these losses okay. it's unlike a season where there's drought where you can't really do much about it at least you can manage too much water there's, you can't manage too much sun as effectively <laughs> more or less <laughs> yeah all right so we'll take a short break and be right back with more economic forum stay tuned Welcome back to Economic Forum. We're discussing all things relating uh, to the economy. My name is Farai Gwaze, and uh, today we're taking a very close look at uh, the state of preparedness within the agricultural sector. Joining me in studio is the Federation of Young Farmers Clubs of Zimbabwe spokesperson, uh, Mr. Yusuf Banda, sharing rather than giving a few insights uh, in our current state of preparedness. Feel free to also engage with us on our social media platform and, uh, and our WhatsApp uh, platforms. Now, before we took uh, the break, um, yeah. you were highlighting how um, uh, to some degree we're meeting or we can meet yeah. uh, some of our our output targets. The concern yeah. that then comes from there is, do those output targets tally to the contribution that is meant to increase our gross domestic product? Um, absolutely. Uh, you have to understand that we were at a negative in terms of, of, of our contribution because we were a net importer of, of, of um, grains especially. So we were food insecure. Now what you need to understand is that um, in terms of the functioning of the economy, in terms of NDS-1 and growth-related prospects such as the GDP growth, ETC, you need to be export-led. And agriculture is a significant anchor in terms of contribution towards you know, GDP. So if you don't, for example, have surplus um, output to, to on-sell on the international market so you can raise forex to stabilize your nostril okay. requirements, ETC, it, it impacts negatively. But now when you've got, uh, you know, bumper harvest tobacco, which is an export growth, bumper harvest grain, bumper harvest horticulture, it means you're poised to contribute positively towards the pot. Mm -hmm. That translates into a positive GDP growth. Right. You can't dispute it. Right. It's, 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 it's textbook economics. Mm -hmm. right. what, what needs to then kick in is um, how we manage our higher level um, processes in terms of the agri sector. Right. Remember I mentioned that, the value chain. Yeah, the value chain. Sure. Remember I mentioned that we're not just an association of farmers, but we're an association of agri professionals. Right. There are people and organizations that specialize in marketing our products in the international space. Mm -hmm. 
to areas where they're needed. Mm -hmm. This is what then kicks in and this when becomes key. Right. How then do we distinguish between a local consumption, well, yeah. the local demand rather for consumption and yeah. also meeting some of our export um, targets to contribute towards the economy? Sure. I mean, it's, it's, it's not rocket science. It's a game. It's, it's numbers. Mm -hmm. If you have a family of four, you know how much you, know, you need to go and hustle so that there's food on the table. Right. The same way for the country, they have the statistics of how many households they are there. Mm -hmm. Typically, I think it's about um, 1.8 million rural households and then uh, about uh, 500,000 uh, urban households that need to be fed. That's, mm -hmm. Those are the ones that inform our output target of 2 million tons or so, so that we're food secure. Right. Now from there, you then extrapolate and say, okay, if we've got 2.5 million or 3 million tons, this is the surplus that we have in terms of grains. Uh, and then you look historically on tobacco and say, typically, we, you know, we, we, do, we move 200 to 300 million tons per annum. So in a good season, if we're above the, that, that, that sort of output, mm -hmm. then we've got extra money. Right. Yeah. Maybe you could also assist with the, some clarity in appreciating some of the uh, bottlenecks rather that come into the yeah. value chain system. Uh, recently, uh, there was an issue that came up around um, the issuance of uh, cooking oil yeah. and how there was um, a component of soya bean extract that yeah. contributed towards uh, the production of cooking oil. Absolutely. So let's, let's look at how some of those um, issues mm -hmm. contribute towards or uh, affect rather yeah. uh, the value chain when it comes to agricultural produce. So the, the the general issue is that we don't live in a vacuum. We live in a in a in a in a in, a, in an international uh, community where we've got different comparative advantages in terms of the goods and services that we produce. So with regard to certain goods, uh, for example, soya bean, uh, our yields here tend not to be as good as in other parts of the world. And our production processes to produce things like the crude, crude, crude oil for, for soya, from soya bean are not as advanced as certain nations are. Mm -hmm. So we have to depend on them to, to access those things. Mm -hmm. So if there's um, constraints um, with regards to their production processes, then that affects us because it means that we have to procure at a higher cost. Mm -hmm. um, it's a signal to us that we have to increase our efficiencies and our advancements in terms of innovation in agriculture, uh, but also um, participation in yeah. free market yeah. trade and free market areas mm -hmm. so that we can benefit from some of the, the policies of regional integration. Mm -hmm. COMESA and some of the recently um, 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 uh, institu constituted policies that cater for sub-Saharan African trade, for right. example. Mm -hmm. Those are key because they allow um, savings which then uh, trickle down to, to, to the normal citizen. Right, right. Yeah. And where do we fare at the moment in comparison with our partners or neighbors rather within the yeah. Sadiq region? I'll give praise to, to, to the powers that be in that in a short, short space of time they've shown a lot of clarity and a lot of cohesiveness in mm -hmm. what they're wanting to do right. in terms of um, um, developing the, the agricultural sector. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of energy that's coming from the young people right. and you know, agriculture is a funny, it's a funny thing, you know, mm -hmm. within two, three seasons, you can change a narrative. And I think that's, that's the story that, that, that uh, Zimbabwe is, is, is telling at the moment. Sure. Because we, we, not so long ago, we were importing our maize, we were importing our wheat, we were importing quite a lot of goods. But now we're at the stage where we're talking about being food secure with, with surplus to, to mm -hmm. put onto the table, ETC. Um, it's a it's an indication that we are stepping up to the plate. Right. We do have a lot of work to do in terms of our um, technology and innovation, but um, we we are we're on the right track. Right. I do want to take a, another short break, but when we come back, we'll be looking at some of the programs that you're referring to that contributed towards us uh, stabilizing and uh, meeting some of our targets. Okay. We'll be right back with more economic forum. Stay tuned.
Welcome back to this final segment of the Economic Forum where we discuss all things relating to the economy today with a specific focus on our, our level of preparedness rather uh, in the agricultural sector. Joined in studio by Federation of Young Farmers Club of Zimbabwe spokesperson, uh, Mr. Yus Banda. Now, um, uh, before um, I, I touch on a few of the aspects of the programs, I do yeah. also appreciate, uh, once again, with our uh, levels of preparedness, um, uh, are we meeting our storage capacity uh, requirements? Are we also meeting uh, um, our um, options of being able to resource farmers should they have any requirements that are needed to be met uh, with regards to the farming season? There's good news and there's bad news. <laughs> but the good news is that um, right. so it's, it's, Chibage has been around for a very long time mm. in, in, in Zimbabwe. Um, they are, um, although in, in, in modern times we depend primarily on, 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 on the grain marketing board for, for storage facilities, um, um, rural households have over the years developed their own techniques of you know um, um, storing maize and ensuring that you know it's, it's, it's safeguarded from moisture ATC mm -hmm. I think what we need to do that's the good news but the bad news is as I mentioned before we need a higher level of innovation and a higher level of technological prowess in terms of you know um, catching up with the times sure uh, because we 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 are not wanting our rural farmers to remain at substance subsistence level we want a significant level of commercial um, you know rural farmers right. as well so in order for that to happen um, I think we need to um, complement or enhance mm -hmm. uh, current government programs so that we're not just strictly dependent on, on the grain marketing board for storage facilities, but we can have a program where even in the, in the small setups in the rural, they can have um, drying facilities and, and, and other storage facilities sure. which can facilitate commercial operations within right. within their respective districts. ETC. Right. And uh, briefly, any adverse uh, effects or contributions as a result of climate change? Um, certainly. I think we... we can't um, uh, be complacent or we can't uh, relax, so to speak, and say, oh, okay, because we've had a good season this year, you know, climate change is, is, is on the back track or is, it's, it's not real. I mean, we, the, the last two, three seasons were drought, were drought seasons. So uh, what I'm happy about is that the government has gone to great lengths to, to enhance um, irrigation-based programs. Mm -hmm. I spoke earlier about uh, what they're doing in in uh, in, in Blawayo, <coughs> in Tokemkosi, uh, Chiredzi. Um, they are also doing uh, in Chipinge. Um, th and then they launched a, a, a program to drill about 10,000 or so uh, boreholes nationwide so that we are prepared for the effects of climate change. Sure. You know, we, we, we live in a world where, it, uh, where it's an information age. And the, the, the simple reality is that compared to other nations, uh, Israel, for example, mm -hmm. we have much better conditions to deal with the effects of drought because, right. you know, we've got better water tables, um, better um, soil profiles, right. ETC. Mm -hmm. um, we've got, we can, we can t t adopt certain technologies that they've put out there like drip and also more efficient irrigation systems. Mm -hmm. So we can tackle climate change right. we, we we cannot we cannot lie to ourselves that it's not there mm -hmm. but we in these good times this is the best time to actually prepare for 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 the drier times right you also did bring up earlier on a, a technological component that would also be able to contribute towards um, more productivity and better output yeah i mean so the beauty about being in a young farmer's uh, setup is that you know we we've got all these fancy technologies that we use now so for example we've got um uh, weather forecasting equipment that can be put onto your farm that's relatively inexpensive. Mm -hmm. um, we've got drone technology which can map and um, interface with with uh, with weather patterns mm -hmm. to predict, um, you know, what can happen in a season, even two three seasons ahead. And again, that technology is is, is inexpensive. It's, it's fairly accessible. Um, so what what now needs to happen is that. Um, we now need to use platforms such as yours to uh, educate people right. and, and, and also mm -hmm. use social media to, to get more up of these technologies mm -hmm. out there and, and make them accessible. Right. Now, you also did uh, commend earlier on uh, efforts by government uh, mm -hmm. in um, addressing issues of preparedness. Yeah. Uh, um, 
share with me rather um, your insights around um, meeting some of the requirements for the national development strategy mm -hmm. but more importantly some of the economic uh, reforms that we've brought in place okay. uh, to be able to ensure that Zimbabwe does meet the uh, middle income economy status by 2030 with regards to contributions of agriculture for sure so the the the, the general gist about um you know, a boom in agriculture or, or, contr or positive contribution in agriculture it has to do, to do with growth. And for growth to be there, you need stability. So we've had the transitional stabilization program, which I think has worked well in terms of stabilizing mm -hmm. um, the, the, the economy. So when you've got stability, that's an indicator that, okay, I can invest fertilizer and seed because I'm going to make a profit and, right. I, and, and, by, uh, and I'm not going to make a loss by the time I sell to, to, you know, to, to GMB or whichever off-taker I'm looking at, whether, right. whether I'm in tobacco or I'm in grains. That's number one. Um, what, what, what happens, and this is in the context of agriculture, is that um, you, you can now feed into uh, programs like the National Development Strategy because um, they have created uh, uh, an environment that's conducive for, for the growth to happen. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we have to give kudos to the government for... So, so you would go so far as to say that the economic reforms and measures, um, I think one of the most painful ones that all Zimbabweans can acknowledge with the austerity ones, yes. uh, managed to be able to create a conducive environment for the agricultural sector to be able uh, to meet some of its output targets. Absolutely. I mean, you can't take that away from them. It's, 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 it's the numbers. The numbers speak for themselves. Sure. The statistics speak for themselves and the um, exchange rate patterns speak for themselves. Mm -hmm. Um, those are your main indicators when you're looking at... When it comes to also accessing uh, consumables, um, would farmers be in a better position right now when it comes to being able to, to meet some of the requirements? Yeah, well, look, yes and no. As somebody, as somebody in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the industry, I can tell you now that we've got a headache where fertilizers, for example, on the world market have gone up right. for one reason or the other. And this, this will, this, you know, that's that tends to affect um, a, a season in terms of um, you know, profitability. But in general, in the context of the Zimbabwean space, compared to um, previous dispositions where, where you, know, it, you could not produce because you were sure to make a loss on account of you know, loss of value through inflation, ETC, right. uh, there's been a vast marked improvement and we, we can attribute it directly to policies such as TSP and NDS one. Right. NDS one, we we now the onus is now upon us to to step up to the plate and produce to the required mm. you know targets that that are that are that are now being indicated. In right. The Air Force. Uh, very briefly, when is the end of our agricultural season? It never ends. <laughs> <laughs> it's ongoing. The moment right. you sell, you have to start again. Mm. Uh, but generally, we we're, 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 at, we're we're just about at the end. Right. We. Once we start harvesting in about a month or two, that's 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 technically the end. Mm -hmm. But uh, agriculture is is a, is a journey. Okay. It's not a destination. Right. Yeah. All right. That's all the time that we do have, and we'll definitely be bringing you in again uh, to follow up on uh, the output uh, from agricultural season. We've been joined uh, by Federation of Young Farmers Club of Zimbabwe spokesperson, Mr. Yusuf Banda. Thank you so much for joining us, and we look forward to speaking to you again in future. Good. Thanks. Good to be here for as always. All right then. That's all the time that we do have here today on Economic Forum. We always do appreciate your contributions. Feel free to get a hold of us on our WhatsApp numbers and also follow us on our social media platforms at Economic Forum Zimbabwe. My name is Farai Gwaze. Pleasant viewing and good night.